Welcome to this mini lecture on steroid hormone metabolism. Steroid hormones are all made from cholesterol, and you should be able to recognize this familiar four ring structure. You should also be somewhat familiar with the numbering system. For example, we're going to be talking about enzymes that specifically work on the 21 position the 21 hydroxylase at the 17 position, at the 11 position, for example. Steroid hormones are made in both the adrenal cortex and in the gonads. Some of these hormones are made in both places, for example, pregnenolone and progesterone in DHEA. And some are made only in the adrenal cortex, such as aldosterone and cortisol, and others are made only in the gonads, such as testosterone and estradiol. A summary of steroid hormone metabolism is provided on your metabolic map. It is up in the upper left-hand corner, and uh, the, that portion of which is shown here. This image shows a summary of steroid hormone regulation and the first steps of the synthesis. The pathway typically begins with the binding of a trophic hormone to its G-protein coupled receptor. So ACTH, for example, is, is such a trophic hormone. LH and FSH are also trophic hormones. These, of course, come from the pituitary gland. So these hormones stimulate their specific G-protein coupled receptors, which, of course, activate adenylate cyclase producing cyclic AMP which activates protein kinase A causing phosphorylation of many different proteins one of which uh, involves increase in uptake of cholesterol from LDL cholesterol bringing more cholesterol into the cell from the blood uh, that cholesterol is then brought into the mitochondria and side chain cleavage enzyme catalyzes the first step so here it's shown here, the side chain of cholesterol is cleaved off, resulting in pregnenolone. And then the pregnenolone diffuses out of the mitochondria. And the next common step is the production of progesterone in the cytosol. The progesterone is then further metabolized by several different enzymes, many of which are cytochrome P450s. A key concept you should know about steroid hormones is that they are not stored, but instead are made on demand. Now, if we contrast this with some of the peptide hormones you know, like insulin, this is actually quite different. Remember that insulin is ready in pancreatic beta cells, and as soon as there is a signal, usually of elevated glucose, the vesicles holding the pre-made insulin uh, are... Um, they fuse with the plasma membrane, and we have instant release of the insulin. This is very different from the steroid hormones, where the synthesis of the hormone is activated once the G-protein-coupled receptor is activated. This table summarizes the key adrenal steroid hormones. They're all made in the cortex, so they're called corticosteroids. The different steroid hormones are made in different zones within the adrenal cortex. Uh, you can see these on your metabolic map. In the zona glomerulosa, uh, aldosterone is primarily made, and in the fasciculata zone, cortisol is primarily made, and DHEA is made primarily in the reticularis zone. The synthesis of cortisol involves the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal glands, and together these are called the HPA axis. So the hypothalamus starts by secreting corticotropin-releasing hormone in response to circadian rhythm and stress. This stimulates the anterior pituitary to release adrenal corticotropic hormone, ACTH, which stimulates the production of cortisol in the adrenal cortex. The cortisol then inhibits the release of both CRH and ACTH in a feedback mechanism. The result is the typical diurnal variation in serum cortisol levels, with highest concentrations in the blood early in the morning and lowest concentrations in the evening and the middle of the night here. Aldosterone is another important corticosteroid.
It's secreted in response to decreased fluid volume levels. And the kidney juxtaglomerular cells start off the process by secreting the protease renin, which cleaves angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. The enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, cleaves angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, the protein structure that uh, the primary structure is shown here, and angiotensin 2 together with ACTH and increased potassium levels stimulate the adrenal cortex to synthesize and secrete aldosterone. The aldosterone then works on the kidney to increase sodium and water resorption and to increase the excretion of potassium. Together, this increases the extracellular fluid volume level, which then feedback inhibits the juxtaglomerular cells. One thing to realize is that the mineralocorticoid receptor binds several different mineralocorticoids. So it binds tightly to aldosterone, but also to deoxycorticosterone, as well as to cortisol. And that has important implications when the levels of these different hormones are off. Question, what kind of receptor is the mineralocorticoid receptor? Mineralocorticoids are steroid hormones. Therefore, the mineralocorticoid receptor is a steroid hormone receptor or a nuclear hormone receptor. That means it's a transcription factor. So the mineralocorticoid receptor, when it binds its hormone, is activated. It moves from the cytoplasm into the nucleus where it homodimerizes and binds to hormone response elements in the promoters of specific genes and activates their transcription. Question, why do mutations in genes encoding the 17-alpha, the 21, and the 11-beta-hydroxylase each cause congenital adrenal hyperplasia? Each of these mutations causes a decrease in the production of cortisol. This decreased cortisol means that there is less of the feedback inhibition on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary, resulting in an increase in the amount of ACTH secreted, which stimulates growth of the adrenal cortex, or its hyperplasia. Some forms of congenital adrenal hyperplasia can result in the virilization of genetically female infants, or the production of what's called atypical or ambiguous genitalia. And this is because in, in certain forms of, of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, there's an increased production of dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, in females that results in external genitalia that looks partially male. Practice question. What is the expected outcome of a 21-hydroxylase deficiency? So that's this enzyme right here. So without 21-hydroxylase activity, there is a decrease in mineralocorticoid production, a decrease in cortisol production, which, which leads to the adrenal hyperplasia, which ends up resulting in a lot of the hydroxyprogesterone and hydroxypregnenolone, which then in the uh, gonads can be converted into large amounts of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, uh, so there is an increase in sex hormone synthesis. So phenotypically, this results in a child with hypotension and hyperkalemia, which can, if it's severe, result in cardiac arrest and death. So this can be a, a medical emergency within the first few days of life. And if, if the infant is a girl, it often results in a typical or ambiguous genitalia because of the high production of the dihydrotestosterone. Because of the seriousness of this condition, 17-hydroxyprogesterone is on newborn screening tests. I recommend that you practice thinking through what would happen with other enzyme deficiencies, say a 17-hydroxylase deficiency or a 5-alpha reductase deficiency, for example.
Steroid hormones are both activated and inactivated. For example, we're showing testosterone here, which is activated by uh, aromatase to convert it to estradiol, both in males and females, and estradiol is further metabolized to inactive metabolites. In males, testosterone is reacted on by 5-alpha reductase to make the very potent androgen dihydrotestosterone, DHT. Uh, DHT is further metabolized to an inactive metabolite. These inactive metabolites are released in the urine. This concludes our short lecture on steroid hormone metabolism. As a summary, steroid hormones are made on demand from cholesterol. Cholesterol is uh, stimulated to be taken up into the steroid synthesizing cells and is converted to pregnenolone and then to progesterone and further metabolized to the other steroid hormones. Second, mutations in the hydroxylases that synthesize cortisol cause congenital adrenal hyperplasia, CAH. The specific hydrolase that is deficient determines whether mineralocorticoids or sex hormone levels are affected. And you should know that CAH can be a serious medical emergency in infants. And finally, steroid hormones are all metabolized, sometimes more active steroids, but always eventually to less active or inactive steroids. And these are all eventually excreted in the urine. I hope that you have found this lecture helpful.